Hello everyone, my name is Lothorn and welcome to How To Tectopia. Alright, Tectopia is a fairly simple mod. It's a colony management mod like Millionaire or Ancient Warfare, which you have NPCs that you control to make a city and they get you resources in exchange, you give them shelter and protection, and also be their leader. However, it is a lot more vanilla than the normal mod. It is a fairly straightforward mod, it doesn't have that many requirements. However, you will need a lot of wood, wool, and emeralds for this mod to work. The emeralds are not as necessary because you can get them by doing stuff within this mod. The very first recipe we're going to be looking at is one of the few recipes that this mod actually adds, which is like this. It doesn't have to be in this order, it can be in any order really, but it will create the town hall. Now the town hall is the main building of your village, but before we even get to what to do with the town hall, let's explain buildings. So. There will be a number of buildings you need for your NPCs to actually do stuff. These buildings have certain requirements. One of those requirements is the building has to have doors, it has to have a roof, and it has to have floor space. Now some buildings have special requirements like beds, armor stands, bookshelves in them for them to serve their purpose. All these things have to be on level with the base of the door. So if the door is on this level of floor for a building, then all the things within the building have to be on this floor level. Then, you'll take yourself an item frame and put it next to one of the doors. You take the town hall and you put it into the item frame and it will validate the town hall, making it into a real town. And this should spawn the very first NPCs and a chest in the building. There we go. So here are our two NPCs, the architect, the tradesman, and the chests are all the things you need to start this mod. Now to get yourself started, first find a place to put your storage down, as you'll need some place for all your villagers to store things. It has to follow the rules, but it, instead of being filled with normal stuff like beds or what have you, you'll have to fill the building with chests. Then you will put the signifier on the item frame to identify this building as a storage building and it will validate. Validation means that when you have something that is actual building and you put in an item frame, it'll go all glowy. If it is not valid, then it'll not glow and it'll be a waste of space and you'll have to make it so the building actually works. Once you have your storage selected, then find a place for some villagers to live. So home two means two villagers can live in it and has two beds. It just has to have about enough space for them to sleep in the beds, a roof over the top. You put the beds down, and as you can see they're red right now, you put that there, it will validate and the beds will turn yellow. Once the beds are slept in, they will turn green, signifying that they are now occupied by villagers. Now you're probably wondering what a farmer and a lumberjack does. Well, we need some nomads for these to actually do anything. The nomads will show up along with a trader eventually, and they will serve your village and be your NPCs slash villagers. I, ah, here they are now. So we've got a, two nomads and the trades person come in. And you can look at the nomads and see their stats. So this guy over here is a chef. We can't really use him. This fellow here is a farmer. So once he gets into our village, we're going to actually slap the farmer tag onto him. So this will consume the item if you're not in creative mode. And it'll turn the NPC into a farmer class, which will then he make him do farming for you and the village. So. You slap it onto him, changes his skin, he's now a farmer. So he'll now go and do farming work for you as a villager. First though, he's going to go claim a bed as his own. As you can see right here, he's got the green bed, he's just going to go check it out and validate all that stuff. Now when you right click on your NPC, you can actually look at their status says, and things they are allowed to do and not do. So this guy is allowed to plant potatoes, wheat, carrots, beetroots, and harvest all of them. And you can med modify these things. So you can also craft yourself a wooden hoe to work with if he has resources and gather sugar cane. He also visit the tavern, read books in the library, and till dirt. Now let's say I don't want him to do these beetroots. So I'm going to say don't plant beetroots and he will understand it. However, we have to actually give him a farm to work with. Farming has a few rules to it. So they will work on farm ground that you've already laid out for them. However, they will actually continually expand the farm if you don't give it borders. Now, borders are simply non-dirt. However, if you don't have a non-dirt block surrounding your farming plot, then the villager will continue farming like a madman until he's covered your whole world with farm. 
also fencing off can be useful. Now at night time, the villagers will go and sleep. They kind of stand there like listless zombies, but they're sleeping, I guarantee it. And it's best for you to sleep at night too, because these still count as villagers, and nasty undead will come and attack them. Now before I forget, I should actually explain the rules of the architect and the tradesman. The architect is how you get these buildings. He'll sell them to you, and you can slap them on to the sides of buildings you've made, and it will make them into that said building. Now the tradesperson is how you get new trades. He will go around and sell you all these lovely trade things so you can make yourself new villager types. And you should also get yourself about four beds set up just to start with as fast as you can, so get what emeralds you can and trade with the trader when you can. So I'm going to signify this as a bedroom as well, so we can basically use those beds in turn. Now the merchant will give you some deals. So this one wants some farming goods, so if you have copious amounts of wheats from your farmers, then you can trade with this merchant, and that is basically how you will get yourself some emeralds. So then you can go and buy other tradesperson jobs. And getting yourself lumberjacks is a good way to get yourself supplies for wood in the future. Now it will be a little bit expensive, but it'll be worth it in the end. To start off with, about two lumberjacks and two farmers. Now they will go off and find some place to harvest trees. And if you don't have any nearby trees, then they will walk quite a distance to get their work done. As you can see here, though, they do go after the nearest tree and they will replant them. So if you want to help your farmer out, then plant a few saplings near, not your farmer, your wood card. Plant a few saplings nearby so they can actually have nearby trees to harvest. Now next on the agenda is figuring out what to do next. You basically want to gather some resources, get your basic first few people getting you food and the likes, and making a sick looking village with your villagers, and then you want to start expanding. You want to get new versatile villagers and new versatile buildings. Now all the information I'm giving you can also be found in the book that will be given to you at the beginning of the game if you have the mod downloaded. I accidentally got rid of mine and you can't find it, but if you open the book, it'll give you a link to the website and it'll tell you all about Tectopia. So next we are going to look at the merchant stall. It is a building that doesn't actually require all that much. It just needs a wall and this little thing here on it. And this will tell the merchant to hang out in this area. So instead of wandering about like a loony, we'll have him trapped in one place. Now the merchant stall can be gotten from the architect. It is one of the many things he will sell to you. 20 emeralds, a little expensive, but if once you have enough resources from your, all of your villagers, then you'll get yourself a merchant wrangled and he will stick around the merchant stall whenever he comes by to visit. Ranching. So ranching requires an item frame and a gate instead of a door. All buildings require doors, except for ranches. They require gates on level with the ranch and it will start the ranching process. Now each different kind of ranch requires a different thing. So there's the chicken coop and there is also a sheep, pen, coo, and pig. And you just have to put them on level with the gate, signify that as a pen, and then they will get penned in. And if you have a rancher, he'll start working with the animals. Now, can you actually have a room inside a building? Well, let's find out. And it looks like you can, which is a pretty nifty thing. So you can make rooms within buildings and have interior rooms. Let's get a few ranchers in here. So this fellow here, we can say, be a rancher instead. And you can reassign them to a new job. So there is two ways to start this mod. I didn't cover for the other way, which is to find a village. As all real villager testificate people will be replaced with these freaks. And there's two different ways to get new villagers. One is nomads. The other is for your villagers to be happy and, and they go to sleep and then they'll just make a kid. Enough said. So next we'll go to the kitchen. Now kitchens are interesting little buildings that require crafting tables and furnaces. And that's about it. Besides the other building requirements of a door and a roof. Now a kitchen looks like a cake. So you slap down that cake there, it'll validate the kitchen, and then all you need is some chefs. Chefs look like a cake as well. And so you just need to find yourselves some willing nomads to turn into your chefs for your village. If you can't find any willing nomads, then kidnap people. Now these people will go off 
to start looking for food to bake with. Um, fortunately, they actually don't have any like wheat deposit in here, so they're going to be sorely disappointed. Oh, they actually do have wheat. How about that? Well, then they'll start making bread. Now, an important thing to note is that buildings and villager roles bought from other villages and other town halls will not work in the different villages. They cannot cross-contaminate. They do not mingle. Everyone must be from the same village, otherwise the mod breaks. Next after that, I think we should get someone to guard our village from harm. And who are better guards than guards? Now guards require a place to live though. They don't live like normal villagers. They sleep during the day and work at night. And they require a very big building with 10 beds in it and training dummies, armor stands. As you can see in here, we've got quite the complex for all our guards to work in. And we will get the barracks set up. Now they'll have a home. And we'll just get some nomads down here. Hello, folks. You ready for our life of servitude? You're a god. 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 And you're a god. Your guards will go and patrol to defend your villagers and make sure everyone's right, especially when they're out and about working. But if you want to choose a specific spot for guards to hang out in, instead of just generally patrolling your borders, you can make a guard post. Now a guard post only has one requirement. It needs to have ground near it and a wall to be put on, and your guards will hang out in the given spot. They will patrol the area, one guard per patrol spot. Next, let's move to the blacksmithery. So blacksmithery is one of those buildings that has extra requirements. It needs anvils, crafting tables, and furnaces in it to operate. And then it just needs the signifiers. But what is a blacksmith the, without ores to work with? You can provide the ores yourself by putting them in storage, or you can get yourself some miners. Miners are a little bit different, or the mining job is a little bit different than normal. So go find yourself a handy dandy mine shaft, deep underground, good distance anyways. Get the mining building, and all it needs is a little stone hallway and a marker near, above it, or beside it. And this will create a valid mine shaft, which will have miners go to work in. So now we got ourselves a group of miners, and they can go off and work in our mine for us. Now that we have miners, we might as well get ourselves a blacksmithy as well to build better gear for our villagers. Now, a blacksmith will craft anything he has the resources to craft with. And now he will set off to work in the smithy. Next, our people seem a little down. They need some cheer in their life. So, we're going to give them a tavern. Now, a tavern doesn't require you to get beer or anything, so don't worry. Instead, it has simple needs of requiring a note block, and you'll find out why, and chairs, the only other thing that you can craft in this mod. They're very simple to make, just sticks and wood. As I said, this mod requires a lot of wood. So you set up your chairs and they will face you when you set them up and you just get a good amount of them and floor space for your villagers to come on in and spend some handy dandy fun times in the tavern. But what is a tavern without some music and live performances? And that is where the bard comes in. So bard will entertain your villagers, a troubadour of sorts. And they will have an awesome looking hat, and they will go to your tavern and play the note block for you. As you can see, re library, performant village, performant tavern, visit tavern. So that is basically all the bard is for. He is going for a bit of a wander, a bit of a lark here, and that is fine by me. He'd rather be a chef, but he doesn't get a choice in matters. No, I choose what my villagers are. Now, your villagers might need to get themselves an education. And 
Sure, a tavern's all nice and being happy is good and fine, but sometimes you want to read. And if you want to read, you gotta go to the library. So the library requires oak shelves in it. Now these shelves have to actually be at floor level, so just keep that in mind when you make it. You can put higher ones higher up for decoration, but floor level is the only ones that are useful. There we go. Had the wrong icon. Slap that on there, and it'll get the library working. And the library is also the place your enchanter will be. Now enchanters actually do need an enchanting table to do any of their work with. So it's best to get one of those into your building. Then you can get yourself an enchanter do all sorts of enchanting work for you, as well as to be a general librarian for your people. So you there will be an enchanter. There we go. And we got ourselves a lovely little wizard now to work for us, Elfric Duke. Once your villagers are getting education, their children too should be educated. So, we've provided them a lovely schoolhouse, and all it needs is some validation. So a school requires chairs for the students to sit in, a teacher to learn with, and a valid building. And it's a straightforward building, so it just follows the normal validation. But we'll need chairs for your students to learn in. So get those set up. Make sure they have a distance between them. Don't want anyone catching anything. And then your teacher will walk about and smack them on the back of the head as your children deserve. Because they know they are disrespectful little tykes and should do better in life. Of course, you actually do need a teacher to teach your students. And you do need students to learn with. So we are going to get ourselves a Jolly Wally little teacher here. And give him the tag to turn him into a teacher to teach our students. Oh my goodness, uh, you are quite the person. Now, as you can see, a lot of our villagers are stumbling about because they are injured or unhappy. Either way, to improve how they feel, we can get ourselves a cleric to heal people, and we can create ourselves a captain who will be assigned to one of the guards. It cannot be assigned to normal people, it's just one of your guards, you can make him the captain. Final class that we have to concern ourselves with in this mod is the druid. The druid will go about and replace ores and helps with trees, grows and the like, and make animals happier. And that is basically it. Anyways, that is Tectopia. I hope that was uh, somewhat useful. It's actually a really straightforward mod, so I'm not sure why you'd have difficulty with it, but if you did, I hope I was helpful and I hope you make yourself a really cool village with lots of cool buildings and people in it. So, thank you all for watching, and if you have any other mods you want an explanation on how to do, let me know and I will make an explanation about it in two to three months. <laughs> no, I'll try to be faster on the next one. Um, so yeah, just any mod you want, Ask me it, and I will try to learn it, and then make a video on it. So, thank you all for watching, and I will catch you next time. So until then, goodbye. I'm trying recording. Man, the volume is way too loud. So hopefully I'll fix that for the next video. And yeah, this was kind of a poorly made tutorial, but hey, sometimes that happens. Anyways, yeah, as I said, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.